Hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about the importance of really good research data management and how it can help make your studies, research and work just that little bit more stress-free. First of all, what is research data? According to MIT, data can be classified into four types. Observational, so data captured in real time that is usually irreplaceable and can include anything from survey data to images of someone's brain. Experimental, this can be data from lab work which can be reproducible such as gene sequences. Simulation, this can be data generated from test models where the models themselves are sometimes more important than the results such as climate or economic models. And finally, derived or compiled data. This is data that is reproducible and can include 3D models, text and data mining and compiled databases. But research data doesn't stop there. Depending on your particular project, research data can also be sketchbooks, video recordings, letters or emails, logbooks, artifacts, specimens, photographs, the list goes on. So why is good research data management important? Well, as you can see, there are a lot of different data types out there and managing it all so that stuff doesn't go missing or get deleted accidentally is key to the success of any project, whether you're writing a weekly assignment or delivering a several million pound funded project. There are different pressures, of course, but the principles of good data management are much the same. With a good strategy, you can ensure that funding requirements are met, your research data remains accurate and reliable, extra work and panic over lost work can be avoided. You can also help ensure the integrity and replicability of your data. Good management can even increase the efficiency of your research and perhaps most importantly, good research data management can help guarantee data security and minimise any dreaded data loss. So, where do you start with developing your research data management strategy? Well, many research institutions have a research management policy, but if not, you can always look at other institutions for helpful examples. Identify helpful people and sources of information such as your research support librarian, an IT officer or your research office. There are many useful checklists and workflows available out there too. Before starting any project, it is useful to develop a data management plan. Depending on what kind of research you're doing, you may get asked for a data management plan from your funder. But even if you don't, having some sort of plan is always a good habit to get into. A good plan helps you work out if there might be any additional costs at certain points, like storage subscriptions, or what to do in a worst case scenario, like having your laptop stolen or infected with a virus. You can also plan around things such as if your data needs specialist software to run it or if you need to anonymise your data. Plus, you might want to share your data more widely so you can plan how you want to do this, what licence you might want to give your data and where you want to store it, such as in a data archive. There are lots of things that you can think about when planning your data management strategy but if you do take some time to plan out as many solutions to potential problems as possible future you will be eternally grateful. Even something as simple as having a systematic file naming system, rather than calling everything final version, no, final final version, or OMG, this is totally the final version now, can massively reduce your stress and help other people who might be using your research find things quickly. So that's research data management in a nutshell. For a bit more information, keep an eye out for teaching sessions from the Office of Scholarly Communications and from us at the Betty and Gordon Moore Library, or just get in touch with any questions. Until next time, bye!